Hi, I'm the Indiana James and welcome to Glastonbury. I grew up watching movies and hearing legends about King Arthur, Merlin the Wizard, the Sword and the Stone, and the utopia-like city Camelot. What is truth from fiction? Where does history begin and mythology end? What is real? Here in Glastonbury, England, which is located about two hours west of London, England, they seem to have an interesting mix in all of the above. This quaint little city has a small town feeling with its roots buried deep into history, mythology, and religion. The Abbey of Glastonbury lies in ruins today due to King Henry VIII's ambition to turn all of England Protestant by destroying all the Catholic cathedrals, monasteries, and abbeys. But what remains is still impressive. These massive pillars that enclose the high altar just make up a third of the entire cathedral. And in the center is the legendary grave. King Arthur, who was he? Was he a man, a myth, a legend? Most historians nowadays believe that he was a chief of one of the Norman tribes that brought great prosperity to this region after the fall of the Roman Empire. Whatever the story may be, this is where this legend all began. This is where it started. This is the legend of King Arthur. Does it really matter if some myth got mixed with fact? Equality for all throughout the land. One could argue that this was one of the first areas that the idea that each man was created equal and that the king or nobility did not have a divine right above others. Isn't the idea or the message greater than reality? Some artifacts, though, still remain hinting towards the ancient truth. This is so cool. This is original medieval tiling. It's beautiful in color and texture. This covered the entire abbey back in the day. So impressive how it still survived. Even stories of Lady Guinevere being captured and held for ransom can be seen in the distance. The Tour of Glastonbury is the only remains of the fortified cathedral where King Arthur and his knights came to rescue Lady Guinevere from Prince Malagon, who was holding her here in this tower. Is this fiction? We don't know. But what we do know is that this massive hill used to be an ancient city. And before the regional lands were drained for farming, it was an island city. Could this have been Camelot? Maybe. No one truly knows. Even legends of the chalice also known as the Cup of Christ, which caught the blood of Jesus Christ at the crucifixion, is rumored to have been washed out here by St. Joseph of Arimathea and buried at the source of the spring, which now bleeds out a reddish hue in the water, symbolizing the blood of Jesus Christ. We now know that the abundant source of iron in the ground, which oxidizes, is what gives this spring its unusual color. Let's see if this water tastes any better than the sulfur water that we had in uh, Bath, England. This is iron water. And it tastes like iron mixed with water. It is stated in the Bible that St. Joseph brought Jesus to an island in the north when he was a boy. Could this have been the spot? Whatever you want to believe, this area definitely has a Garden of Eden-like atmosphere. There are even reports that the thorn tree that grows in this region of England derived from the crown of thorns that Jesus wore at the crucifixion and was buried here by Joseph of Arimathea. Each year when this tree naturally blooms around Christmas, a section of the thorn and flower is sent to the Queen of England to display on the royal table. Whatever you enjoy, history, religion, myths, legends, quiet little towns, shopping, warm friendly atmospheres, beautiful scenery. This town has them all. So what if King Arthur really didn't exist? It is what he stood for which brought me here. So what is Glastonbury? It's a living legend like no other.